What's up, YouTube? My name is Vince, and today I'm going to go through a Security Plus practice test. We're going to do part one. That's 20 questions. If you guys are thinking about taking the test one day or you're planning on taking it and you're already studying, this is a great video for you. Follow along with me uh, with the questions and we'll look at the answers at the end and see how we did. Hopefully we will all learn something. These practice questions we're doing today are from NoDirect and they cost $20. Um, there, it was not on sale, but it includes four tests. So we're gonna go through test four, 20 questions at a time, and let's see how we do. Naomi has created a control system for her organization without a network linking it to her other networks. This kind of setup can be described as, I would say air gap because it's not linked at all. So that is a security measure where there's a complete separation of networks. It is virtually impossible for someone to penetrate unless they gain physical access to that network. The physical tokens deployed for multi-factor authentication are mostly threatened by physical tokens. So this is something you would carry on your person. Uh, I would definitely say theft would be one of them. I think theft and loss. I don't know how easy it is to clone physical tokens. I know you can clone NFC or RFID cards pretty easily with um, relatively low proximity, like, you know, 10 feet or so. Maybe, maybe less. Um, but theft and loss seem the most likely here, so I'm going to go with that. Which of the following is a password hashing algorithm based on the Blowfish cipher? I know that Blowfish is used to encrypt things repeatedly to lengthen and strengthen keys. I'm not sure which of these is an algorithm based on Blowfish, but I'm gonna go with B because Blowfish starts with B. Which of these options should be deployed to ensure that encrypted files are kept confidential and safe for as long as possible? So we can use a 20-bit key, shortest key possible, 32-bit key, or longest key possible. I'm gonna go with longest key possible because the longer the key, the harder it is to crack or decrypt. Obviously, if you were taking into account in encrypting algorithms, um, that would also play a factor, but they were only asking about length. The IP schema configuration management would offer what type of security benefit? Detecting malicious software, malicious devices, rogue devices, or DDoS attacks. So an IP schema configuration management, I think what they're saying is uh, you have a standard way of setting static IP addresses or even setting DHCP IP address ranges for different types of devices. So for example, all your wireless devices are on 10.10.90.0 and all your, you know, printers are on 10.10.95.0, WAC24. There's a way of doing things that is easily identifiable. What that would do is if someone connected a rogue device and assigned a static IP address, um, it would stick out like a sore thumb. So I believe that's the answer for this one. Question seven, which of the listed options should first be considered whilst trying to enhance security on an organization's network? So the options are install antivirus on all workstations, disable unneeded services on all workstations, create multiple VLANs, or uninstall unneeded applications on all workstations. Now, none of these would be my first go-to to enhance security, but out of these four options, I think install antivirus on all workstations would be a good start. Given that the most common attack vector is business email compromise or phishing emails, uh, I think intrusion would typically start with uh, someone clicking on a phishing email and downloading some type of malware, which would give the attackers initial access via their workstation. If you had antivirus installed on that workstation, it could potentially catch and stop that initial compromise. So install antivirus is not a bad idea. Um, multiple VLANs is great for separating traffic. The biggest geographical concern for security is environmental disaster, internal disaster, person-made disaster, or external disaster. If I understand what they're asking here, I believe it's environmental disaster. For example, if you live in California, you're worried about earthquakes. If you live in Kansas, you're worried about tornadoes. If you live in... Hmm, 
Japan, you're worried about tsunamis. So geographical concern, you have to be aware of what is possible in your geography. Uh, you have to think about and predict and plan for the worst case scenario in terms of your geography. Which of the listed protocols is best used to validate certificates and check if they have been revoked? Okay, best use. So RA is registration authority. OCSP, I just read this. I, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's um, it's something that browsers can use to check if a certificate is still valid. So I'm gonna select that for the answer. All right, question 10. Uh, we're doing 20, so we're halfway through. And if you guys are still with me, thank you for watching. Uh, please, if you find this content helpful, please hit the subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, I have a lot of watch hours. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I hit 500 a couple days ago, which is like a huge milestone to me. And I do just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel and everyone who's watching. I really appreciate you guys. And it's fun for me to do this. So I, I enjoy, I enjoy the fact I'm glad that there's actually people watching these videos because it gives me a reason to make them. Question 10, which of the list of technologies would be the best in implementing a directory service? XML is extensible markup language. SQL is SQL. LDAP is lightweight directory access protocol and DLL stands for dynamic link library. So directory service is going to be the one with directory in the name, lightweight directory access protocol. If you want to use physical safeguards to ensure that important data can be transferred in unencrypted form, what solution would you deploy? physical safeguards important data can be transferred in unencrypted form okay locked cable distribution cable locks usb cables or protected cable distribution cable locks and usb cables i'm honestly not sure what the difference is between a locked cable distribution. i guess i guess you're locking up the ethernet wiring is what they're getting at or like all the cabling so people can't you know, put an interceptor in the middle of your cable and have traffic passing through and copying it and then reading unencrypted traffic. So locked cable distribution makes sense to me. Cable locks sounds like the cable's locked into the jack, but you could still just splice the wire and it would cause a momentary outage, but you could install an interceptor. I forget what it's actually called, a replicator or something that you would replicate all the packets and you would have, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know after the brief outage um, that you would be reading all the unencrypted data. Protected cable distribution just sounds like a weaker version of locked cable distribution. So I'm going to go with locked cable distribution. Which of the listed options would be best for securing a server room door? Cable lock, deadbolt, Faraday cages, or padlock? Okay, a Faraday cage is for blocking radio frequency waves. A deadbolt seems like that would be the easiest to bypass. A cable lock seems like a really weird usage for a server oh for a server room door i don't i want to say padlock because it sounds the most normal but i think they're easier to pick like with lock picking devices so i'm gonna go with cable lock even though it's weird i think of using cable locks on racks and like when you have the rack lock uh a lot of them have built-in locks but some of them you know you can put a cable lock through that on a server room door, door it's kind of weird, but I'm going to go with that. Your company deploys a CCTV monitoring system, which is always in use. In a bid to make the CCTV system respond to theft and other issues, what additional feature is most likely to receive requests to counter these problems? Motion recognition, object detection, DVR, or guards? We're trying to, we're trying to respond to theft and other issues. I would think motion recognition because you could be alerted at night if there was intruders. Also guards um, to respond to theft. It doesn't say to detect theft. That's important. So responding to theft would be guards. I'm going to stick with guards. FTPS traffic is mostly implemented on two major ports, namely 20, oh, sorry, 80 and 443, 
21 and 990, 67 and 68, or 455 and 453. Now, it's been a while since I've gone over my ports. I don't know them as well as when I took my Network Plus, but I know that 80 is HTTP, 443 is HTTPS, 21 is... Wait. 21 is SSH. 990, I believe, is SFTP or FFTPS. Uh, 67 and 68 are UDP. And 455 and 453, I'm not sure. I forget about those. So I'm going to go with 21 and 990. I had this question on another test, and I remember that 990 was related to FTPS, which, by the way, stands for File Transfer Protocol over SSH. I think. Your friend surreptitiously sent you concealed data by modifying a music file in a way that would not affect the sound of the music. What method has she just used? Surreptitiously. That's a five-point word. Um, this question is now worth six points. So if you're modifying a music file, any type of file really, without there being visible changes to the file, that's known as steganography in general, um, which I always think of a stegosaurus when I hear that word, um, but it means hiding information in a file. It's not secure per se, it's security through obscurity. It's kind of like a secret message. It's like if you wrote a letter to somebody and then you wrote a letter below the letter in invisible ink and they had to have to know that it's there to look for it. That's a good analogy. So the answer sounds like audio steganography. I'm not sure, I haven't heard the classification of lightweight. It's not cryptography because we're not using any encryption or hashing or anything like that. We're just, I mean, you could be, but essentially we're just hiding information in an audio file. So audio steganography. A firewall that scrutinizes the context and contents of every packet it comes across is classified as stateless packet filtering firewall, web application firewall, stateful packet filtering firewall, or unified threat management. A web application firewall would be a firewall that is contained within a web application. Unified threat management is a device that does a lot of monitoring and log collecting and it has multiple built-in capabilities like intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, etc. I believe the answer here is stateful packet fi filtering firewall. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with that. The DNSSEC, when deployed, has what function? DNSSEC, DNSSEC. Confidentiality, integrity, or availability. Okay, I'm blanking on DNSSEC, but I know that it has to be related to DNS, which is domain name services. And this probably stands for security. So DNS is used to identify owners of domains, right? <laughs> So if we're going out with that, and assuming it's not none of the above, then I would think it would be in integrity, I think. Because integrity means you know that something hasn't been changed. It's kind of a stretch. It's, I think it's either integrity or none of the above, but I'm, I'm going to go with integrity. Question 18, what computational design concept can be used to describe a situation in which you deploy servers and storage to all of your company's facilities so that scientific equipment can forward data at the right speed? Okay, so we're deploying servers and storage to all our facilities because we want speed. So this sounds like edge computing. Fog computing is cloud computing combined with Internet of Things devices. I don't think it's that. Containers is, um, I don't know how to explain it well, but that's not the answer. Microservices is spinning up services um, without a server. So it's not that. So I, I think edge computing makes the most sense. Edge computing is having your having the devices where the computing is happening as close to the edge of the cloud network as possible, um, as close to the device that's requesting the services or information as possible. Um, so deploying servers and stuff to each facility means 
they can do it there at the edge. It doesn't have to come back to the data center, be computed, and then get sent back to the facilities. The servers are at the facilities. So they're at the edge of the cloud cloud network. So it can happen right there at the edge. Yeah. 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 John secures the original data in a social security number field to ascertain that users on his database do not get access to it. This data security process is best described as he it, he secures it. He secures a certain field. So tokenization is replacing important data with a token that has no actual mathematical dependency or correlation to the value. Um, that's I don't think that's what this is because yeah, you wouldn't have the information then. And compression and minimization just sound like you're making it smaller. Masking, I believe, is the answer. Question 20, last one. Which of these options would best be able to ascertain that applications on a network have not been breached nor affected with a Trojan virus? Use a proxy server, use time of check, use cryptographic hashes, or use VLANs. Applications on a network. So we're looking at supposedly static application files and using a proxy server is just is just like using a relay right using time of check would not help with this cryptographic hashes cryptographic hashes we can use now you have probably seen this before when you download a file a lot of times they'll have uh, a checksum and that is basically the value that should be output when you put that application through a hash so you'll see like an md5 or a sha1 or a sha256 checksum um, if the application has been modified the hash will be completely different and that's because of the way hashes work so this is the correct answer here um, if you have a hash the only requirement would be that you have a hash of the original state of the application, or if you get the hash from the manufacturer, the producer, the developer of the application, then you could compare those two hashes. And if yours was different, you would know, not necessarily that it was breached or affected with a Trojan, but you would definitely know that there have been changes made. So that would give cause for further investigation. Let's see how we did on the first 20 questions. We're just looking for if we get 20% correct, then we got 100%. All right, we got 25% correct. So there's clearly not as many questions as I thought on this test. So we got 15 out of 20, which is equivalent to a 75%, which is not terrible. Let's review. If you guys recorded your answers uh, while you were going along with this, then you can grade yourself. If not, you can just see how I did. So air gap, air gap was correct for number one. Theft and loss, according to them, was the most likely threat to physical tokens. Bcrypt was correct as a password hashing algor algorithm based on Blowfish. That was a an informed guess. Uh, longest key possible was correct for securing encrypted files. Question five. Oh, I accidentally skipped question five. Question six was. IP schema was for detecting rogue devices. Question seven, interesting. Okay, so they think that disabling unneeded services is more important than installing antivirus. I can, I can see the validity of that. I wanna see their reasoning. Disabling unneeded services on all computers is one of the best ways to harden the operating system and that is the first step in strengthening security. I, I guess I could see how that, that's correct. I, I would argue that nowadays things are being shipped more securely, not securely, but more securely than in the past, according to default configurations. There's definitely still some services that you would want to turn off, I'm sure. Environmental disaster was correct. Uh, OSC, OSCSP was correct. So that stands for Online Certificate Status Protocol. It's an internet protocol used for obtaining the revocation status of an X.509 digital certificate. Blah, blah, blah. LDAP was correct. All right, so this one we got wrong. So locked cable distribution was incorrect as a, as a way to physically safeguard important data that will be transferred unencrypted. Protected cable distribution was correct. So 
I thought that that sounded weaker than locked, but clearly I didn't know what I was talking about. So protected distribution systems are wire line or fiber optic system that includes adequate safeguards and or countermeasures, acoustic, electric, electromagnetic, and physical to permit its use for the transmission of unencrypted information through an area of lesser classification or control. Okay, that's super cool. Uh, fiber optic by default is definitely much harder to tap than copper wire ethernet. However, it's still possible. Okay, so Deadbolt was correct for securing a server room door. Apparently, I need to go over my physical security measures uh, subject matter. Cable lock was incorrect. Their reasoning is Deadbolts are the most secure because they need to be engaged when the door is shut. They have a unique locking device built into the bolt that can't be forced back into the door, thus preventing unwanted entry. Okay. When they said Deadbolt, I was thinking of those little those external bolts outside of the door that it's like you pull it up and then you slide it like this. That's that's what I was thinking of when they said deadbolt. Now that they explain it this way, I realize they're talking about that thick steel bar that's in the door and goes into the frame and jam of the door. So they were right. DVR, not guards, in order to respond to theft and other issues. Interesting. Okay. Question 14, 21, and 990 was correct. 21 and 990, FTPS, also known as FTP, okay, FTP over SSL and FTP secure, so I said over SSH, that was incorrect, is an extension to the commonly used file transfer protocol that adds support for TLS and formerly SSL, which is now prohibited. SSL is deprecated. TLS is the new SSL. All right, question 15, audio steganography was correct. Question 16, stateful packet filtering firewall was correct. 17, I got it right. I guessed on this one. DNS security does ensure integrity. The domain name system security extensions is a feature of the DNS that authenticates responses to domain name lookups. It does not provide privacy protections for those lookups, but prevents attackers from manipulating or poisoning the responses to DNS requests. Makes sense. Edge computing was correct for 18. Masking was correct for 19. Cryptographic hashes was correct for 20. I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you like the video, then like the video. And if you want to see more of this content, then go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.